द नेक्स्ट इज रिगार्डिंग द जे वी पी जे वी पी इज अ जुगुलर वीनस पल्स बट वाट वी यू मैन वाट यू मैंशन बाई जे वी पी इन एन एक्सामेशन इज जुगुलर वीनस प्रेशर लेट एस सी हाउ यू आर लुकिंग फॉर द जुगुलर वीनस प्रेशर सो फर्स्ट बिफोर दैट फर्स्ट यू हेव टू आइडेंटिफाई द पोजिशन ऑफ द जुगुलर वेन सो यू कैन सी इज जुगुलर वेन इज बिटवीन द टू हेड्स ऑफ द स्टर्नम यू कैन सी द स्टर्न दिस इज स्टर्नल हेड एंड इज द क्लाविकुलर हेड ऑफ स्टर्न क्लोडो मैस्टर्ड मसल एंड इन बिटवीन इज अ साइट वेर यू इनिशियली सी द जुगुलर वेन and any elevated jugular venous pulsation you can see as a uh, uh, it is rising over this area the problem is that you have to first differentiate whether it's a if you are seeing a pulse you have to differentiate whether it's a carotid pulse or a jugular venous pulse so the differences mainly are carotid pulse is as i have already mentioned it is located more medially to the sternomastoid muscle while the jvp is seen in between the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the carotid pulse is usually felt as a more outward thrust while jvp is more a wavy sort of pulsation and there is a postural and respiratory variation for jugular venous pulse while carotid don't have such variations also you can obliterate carotid uh, jugular venous pulse like if you press on the root of the neck you can obliterate the jvp while uh, the, you cannot uh, do that in the carotid pulse so, so these are the various differences between the carotid pulse and the jvp so uh, make sure that you are making the patient lying in a 45 degree position Uh, to, in order to examine the JVP, because this is the ideal position for looking for the jugular venous pulse. So, in an exam, if you are uh, getting a patient in a supine position, if you want to examine the JVP, make sure that you ask for a backrest or incline the upper portion of the bed to a 45 degree so that you can examine for the JVP. So, uh, ideally, you have to turn the head uh, slightly towards the opposite side and tilt towards the same side so that the neck muscles are relaxed here and look for any pulsations in this area. So, if you are getting a wavy pulsations, make sure that this is not a carotid pulse. By just palpate it and see whether it is an out outward pulsation like a carotid. If it is not, then most likely it is uh, likely a JVP. And JVP it is elevated, it can go higher up and even up to the ear lobe crease. So, at this position even you can see a JVP. So, carefully inspect for all these areas for an abnormal pulse which can be a JVP. So, this is the first method. That is inspection. Look for the wavy pulsations of JVP. Next is you have to measure the how much is the jvp to measure the jvp uh, if you are finding for example if this is the upper area upper limit of the J jvp pulse you are getting then you have to use two scales for this method so keep one of the scales horizontal to the bed horizontal to the bed where the upper border of jugular venous pulse is there and next measure the uh, distance of this scale from the sternal angle so you can palpate this is the sternal angle and the, from the sternal angle you keep another scale and on this scale you can measure so here it is for you can example you can see it's 5 cm so like that you have to measure how much is the jvp so you can mention the mention it as uh, jvp is elevated about 5 cm above the sternal angle by your method of examination normally you can see uh, the jvp in normal person sometimes you may see a just visible jvp above the Uh, this in the in between the sternomastoid you may get sometimes a just visible jvp so sometimes it may be a normal or abnormal if it is grossly elevated then there is no doubt that it's an elevated jvp but if it is just elevated above this uh, clavicula joint you may get a doubt that whether it is a normal or abnormal to differentiate this you have to use the abdominal jugular reflex so uh, let us see how you look for abdominal jugular reflex so here you have to press on the epigastrium uh, for about 30 seconds continuously and normally when you press what happens is that the jvp will elevate okay and keep the keep, keep your pressure over the abdomen continuously for 30 seconds and see whether the whole time you are pressing this elevated jvp is remaining like that normally if the jvp is uh, the normal variant like you are just seeing a normal variant of jvp visible then after few pulsations about 2 to 3 pulsations it will come back to normal position but in case of an positive abdominal jugular reflux or ab abnormal jvp it will remain elevated throughout the period you are pressing the abdomen like if you are pressing for a 30 seconds the whole 30 seconds the jvp will remain elevated in that case you can take it as a positive abdominal jugular reflux when you are uh, doing an abdominal jugular reflux sometimes you may not get a uh, increase in pulse like increase in pulsation in the jvp like if you are pressing on the abdomen there is no change in the jvp this is seen in a condition that is bartschieri syndrome where there is an obstruction of the hepato hepatic vein or inferior vena cava in obstruction is there so the pressure effect is not transmitted towards the right atrium so uh, what you are measuring from the uh, sternal angle 
is actually not the true right atrial pressure. The, it is said that the right atrial central is, sit, center is situated about 5 cm below the sternal angle. So, to get the right atrial pressure, you have to add 5 cm to whatever value you are getting. But in examination, what you have to mention is whatever you are reading, you are getting above the sternal angle. And you can mention as JVP is elevated about 5 cm above the sternal angle. Like that only you need to mention. Next is the cardiovascular system examination proper. So, this is as any examination it is divided into inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. So, first of all, uh, you have to inspect the chest wall for any abnormalities like, so you can look for the holes of the uh, chest wall and first you look for any abnormalities in the chest wall. Sometimes you may get a barrel chest or sometimes you may get pectus carinatum or pectus excavatum like ch changes. In that case, your assessment may go wrong. So, make sure that you are uh, looking for such findings. Also look for, next is the precordium. Look for the precordium. Precordium is the area which is overlying the heart. So, this is the area where the, it is overlying the heart. This is called the precordium. And sometimes you may see a precordial bulge. So, the precordial bulge is suggestive of a uh, right ventricular hypertrophy or hyperdynamic states occurring in the childhood. So, when the chi uh, it happens only in the childhood, not in the adult. Now, after looking for the chest wall and the precordium, now, the next thing you have to look for is any abnormal pulsations. So, normally you can look for the pulsations in different areas. So, the first is the apex. This is the apex. So, first you have to inspect for the apex. The inspection should be done at this angle and look for any uh, significant pulsation you can see on the chest wall. And apex is defined as the outermost and latermost area where you get the maximum cardiac impulse. So, look for the uh, by inspection, look for any abnormal pulsation, any normal apex and any abnormal pulsations in that area. So, if you are getting an abnormal pulsation in uh, the supra sternal area, it may be due to an aortic arch aneurysm or it may be seen in aortic regurgitation. Also, you look for the prominent carotid pulse, which is also an abnormal pulsation. If you are getting a very prominent pulse, it may be seen in hyperdynamic circulations and in aortic regurgitation. Look for the abnormal pulsations in the aortic area and the pulmonary area which may suggest a, a pulmonary hypertension or an aortic aneurysm or an aortic regurgitation you may get abnormal pulsations. In the epigastrium also you look for various abnormal pulsations. It may be due to an aortic aneurysm or a right ventricular enlargement or hepatic pulsations you may see in this epigastric area. So, look for any abnormal pulsation like this. Next thing you have to look for is any for any scars or sinuses. Scars most often you can see sometimes a midline scar which is extending right from uh, this area downwards. If you are seeing a midline scar, it is most likely to be a post coronary artery bypass graft or the patient might have underwent a cardio, uh, cardiac valve replacement. So, it may be a pro case of prosthetic valve. Prosthetic valve. Now, if you are seeing a, uh, a scar in the lateral aspect, if you are seeing a, lat a scar in the posterolateral aspect, it may be due to a uh, mitral valve repair. That is a closed mitral valvotomy scar it may be. So, you have to look for such scars in the chest wall. 